In this presentation, the reconstruction of a bone defect in the proximal phalanx will be demonstrated. A bone graft and a 1.5 mm variable angle locking rotation correction plate will be used for the reconstruction. Upon completion of this exercise, you should be able to identify the anatomical elements of the proximal phalanx and correctly perform the reconstruction of the proximal phalanx using a bone graft and a plate. This approach is indicated for bone defects at the proximal phalanx. The patient is positioned supine on the operating table with the arm placed on an arm table at the level of the shoulder joint. The use of a tourniquet is strongly recommended. A fluoroscope is positioned opposite the surgeon to allow intraoperative radiological examination. The approach is shown on the proximal phalanx of the middle finger but is identical for all long fingers. A curved skin incision is made on the ulna or radial side dorsally over the metacarpophalangeal or MCP joint and is extended longitudinally in the midline onto the dorsal surface of the proximal phalanx. Here, a straight longitudinal incision is made over the MCP joint and the proximal phalanx. A proximal curve over the MCP joint is also possible. The central slip of the extensor tendon is incised and the bone defect zone is exposed with retractors. The required instruments for reduction and fixation are the 1.5, 1.1 double drill sleeve, the 1.1 mm drill bit, the depth gauge, the star drive screwdriver, the 1.1 variable angle drill guide with coaxial and conical ends, and the 1.1 variable angle drill guide with coaxial and freehand usable ends. To fill the bone defect, a bone graft is cut from a hard foam block. The graft is inserted into the defect after rounding off the dorsal margin. When a corticocancellous graft is used, the cortex should lie on the palmar side opposite the plate for optimal stability. The plate is placed on the bone and, using the 1.1 coaxial side of the drill guide, the first screw hole is drilled with a 1.1 mm drill bit. The required screw length is measured with the depth gauge. The first variable angle locking screw is inserted but not fully tightened, which allows the plate to be adjusted by pivoting it. The cortex screw is inserted through the longitudinal hole of the plate head using the 1.1 double drill sleeve and 1.1 mm drill bit. The screw is not fully tightened in order to provide subsequent plate adjustment. After the plate has been adjusted, the screws are fully tightened. In order to compress the bone fragments and the bone graft, a sharp hook is inserted into the most distal plate hole and pulled distally. The conventional cortex screw will be inserted through the longitudinal hole of the plate shaft using the 1.1 double drill sleeve and 1.1 mm drill bit.
the screw is not fully tightened in order to allow final adjustment of the distal shaft fragment. After correctly positioning the fragment, the screw is fully tightened, which can provide axial compression. The most distal plate hole will be filled with the variable angle locking screw using the 1.1 variable angle drill guide and the 1.1 mm drill bit. The graft will be fixed to the plate with a cortex screw in the usual manner. The fixation is completed with the insertion of two more locking screws, one into the plate head hole, the other into the plate shaft hole. You should now be able to identify the anatomical elements of the proximal phalanx and correctly perform the reconstruction of the proximal phalanx using a bone graft and a plate.